Hey guys, I'm here for another baking extravaganza with you. Today we're going to make bread pudding. Bread pudding is the favorite dessert of my cinematographer, so I thought it would only be proper if I made that today. I was lucky this week. I had a local bakery in Seattle donate bread to the hospital and all kinds of other baked goods, so they gave me this loaf of bread as a way of thanking kind of providers for being at the hospital, and I thought, hey, Time for some bread pudding, so I'm gonna teach you how to make it. It's actually a very easy dessert to make. The recipe says to use about a half a loaf of bread, and it really depends what kind of bread you wanna use. A lot of sweeter breads like challah bread and egg-based breads are really good. This is a oatmeal butter milk loaf, so we're gonna see how that tastes. Um, it says half a loaf, but really what you want is you want to get about five to six cups of, of bread cubes. So you take the bread, I think it's easier to do even a couple slices at a time, and you're just going to cut chunks. And when you cut bread, it's good to use a serrated knife. So a serrated knife is a knife that has these little scallops on it, you can kind of see here. And we're going to cut about two inch cubes, so kind of bigger bigger chunks than you might imagine. This is not, not making croutons. So some of mine are a little smaller, some are a little bigger. If you wanna keep track of how much you're doing, you can just put them in a bowl or a measuring cup. This isn't quite like when we did cupcakes and we, we said to make them all the same size. Uh, this is not raw dough, so it's not gonna burn or, or undercook if, if it's a little bit different in size. The crumbs are good. You can just go kind of between the pieces. So this is just under four cups. We'll do a couple more slices and that should take us there. All right. I think that's good for our bread. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get a dish that you can put this in, a casserole dish or a, a Pyrex dish. You want something that's about one and a half quarts or enough to hold four to six cups of bread pudding. So one and a half quarts. If you look on the bottom, a lot of times you can kind of see the measurement on, on the dish itself. So this is one and a half quarts. It asks you to grease it. If you have cooking spray, you can spray it. You can also take a stick of butter and even leave the, the wrapper on, just kind of cut, cut an opening and then just run it around like this to kind of grease. So you can see, get the sides too. If there's any little nooks and crannies, just use your fingertips. You can wash them after. Make sure you got it all covered. Once you grease your dish, you're going to move your bread to your dish. You can see there's still a little room here and we want to make sure there is still room because we're going to add 
add a custard on top and it need, needs room to go. So we'll, we'll leave the bread here. I'm gonna rinse out my measuring cup because I'm gonna need it. And then in just a moment, we're gonna start making the custard on the stove top. All right, the next step is we're gonna make a custard to pour over our bread pudding. And a custard is essentially a mix of different dairy products. So we're gonna add milk and eggs. We're also gonna add some butter and a little bit of sugar, and that's what's gonna kind of make it taste sweet, like a dessert. So the recipe calls for us to add two cups of milk. So if you look on here, it says one pint. This is actually two exact cups. Um, if you don't have an exact measurement, you're gonna use a glass measure to pour. So something like this, this is Pyrex. We're gonna practice just for the sake of practice, even though this is already measured out two cups. You wanna get down on the ground so you can kind of see the lines and look and then pour in and then stop when it gets to the two cup line. There we go, perfect. This guy goes in our recycle bin. We'll pour this in the pot. I haven't turned on my heat yet, because when I'm making a custard, I want to make sure that all the ingredients get mixed together before I start to heat them. Or sometimes it's too easy to burn the milk or to start cooking the eggs. So we'll get everything in here and then we'll turn on the heat. So I'm going to come back here to my other ingredients. It asks us to add two eggs. So I always want to crack my eggs on the surface of the bowl, or in this case, measuring cup, because I don't want to make a big mess on the countertop. One. Two. All right, I've just added the eggs to my saucepan. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So when you measure vanilla, it's really good to measure over something else and then pour it into your pan. Okay. Then when I get my measurement perfect, then I'm gonna add it to the pan. Okay, vanilla's in. Next, we add our sugar. When you measure sugar or any dry ingredient in a measuring cup, you might see that you get kind of a big mound. The best thing to do is what we call leveling. And to level, you take the flat edge of an instrument, like a knife, so this side here, not this side here, and you kind of scrape it across the edge to get rid of the excess, and then you have a nice flat surface and a perfectly measured one third cup. So I'm gonna carry this over to my pot so I can add it in. Okay, sugar's in. The last thing we wanna to add to our pot is two tablespoons of butter. And instead of dumping this into a measuring spoon and trying to mash it in, you're gonna look at the side and you will see these little markings, one tablespoon, two tablespoons. So you take a knife and you cut straight down on that two tablespoon line. Leave the wrapper on, it's your guide. And then when we come over here to our pot, now we can take off the wrapper sort of set it in. Okay, we have all of our ingredients here. Now it's time to turn on the heat. We're gonna turn on our burner. We're gonna cook this over low heat. So it's too hot right now. 
put it on like a three and just you want to kind of stir and mix your ingredients you want to make sure your eggs don't cook and we're just going to cook this over low heat until the butter melts and it's all kind of one one homogenous mix we're almost there guys i've been stirring this because you don't want the eggs to cook you really don't want scrambled eggs and milk for your custard. You want it to be all one thing. As you can see, I still have a little lump of butter, so I'm not quite there, but so close. Just keep going to the final end. Make sure everything mixes together. Keep stirring. It'll be worth the wait. All right, our butter has melted. So I'm gonna take my pan over here. You can put it on a trivet or a hot pad. Just gives you a little time. Now, there's a few optional add-ons for this. So not in the base recipe, but if you like them, they can add some texture. One thing you can do is add a few raisins. Don't go overboard. Just take some raisins if you like them. It adds a little bit of sweetness. They get nice and plump once you bake them. Just sort of hook them down if you like. What I like about bread pudding is it's not as measured as like a, a cake or a dough. You don't need to measure out exactly the right amount of raisins, exactly the right amount of bread crumbs, exactly the right amount of everything. Gives you a little bit more freedom in your process. Okay, now we're gonna add our custard onto the bread. Just pour slow. Try and move the pan around as you go. It's a liquid, so it'll kind of do that on its own eventually, but you can help it along by sort of just moving it around as you go. Uh, some some bakers will put this right in the oven. Your teacher, I like to let it sit for 15 to 30 minutes. What that does is it really allows the bread to absorb some of that custard. So the custard's just like inside out in the bread and it really, really soaks in and you get that flavor kind of throughout when, when it comes out of the oven. So we're gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes and then we're gonna put it in the oven. If you haven't already preheated your oven, Now's the time to do so. I preheated before I started. I'll meet you back here in about 20 minutes and we're gonna put this in our oven. All right guys, I've let this marinate for 20 minutes and I'm ready to put it in the oven. The last thing I'm gonna add is just a little sprinkling of cinnamon on top. So I take my cinnamon I have this pour spout, make sure that you don't have it just completely open. You don't want globs of cinnamon and just sort of, just little sprinkles. All right, it's gonna go in the oven. We're gonna bake this for about 30 to 45 minutes. Start with 30 minutes and then add time as needed. What you're looking for is it'll be like a little bit wobbly and the edges will have browned. Um, the main thing is making sure the egg is cooked, but you also just want a nice texture. You don't want it to be overly done or kind of underdone. You still want some, some crunch. So look for those brown edges and look for a little wobbliness. We're gonna go ahead and put this in our oven. Set our timer. See you in 30.
My timer just went off, so I am going to check. What we're looking for is brown around the edges and maybe a little bit jiggly. So let's, let's see what we got. It's definitely got some jiggle. It's a little golden. I'm gonna give it about five more minutes. I think that'll be just about right. Five minutes have passed, so let's check and see how it's doing. Uh, we got some nice browning and a little bit of jiggle. I think we're perfect. We'll let this cool a little bit just so we can kind of do it, but you do want to serve it warm. This is what we're doing with our bread pudding. We put a little bit of vanilla ice cream on top and a little bit of caramel sauce. I highly recommend this.